uh, March 27th, 2019, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, we have a couple of different matters to continue tonight, uh, consider tonight, I should say. Uh, first on our agenda is uh, election of a chair and a vice chair for our zoning board. So I would ask for first uh, nominations for chair. Uh, well, since you're already sitting there and uh, <laughs> acting as chair tonight, I would uh, I'll nominate you, Mike. What's that? I, th I nominate you. I think you've done a great job in the past standing in, uh, and uh, I think you'd do a great job this year. So I nominate Mike Valencourt. Any other nominations? Hearing none, any uh, second to the nomination? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right, I will abstain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all, I, I think. You guys are nothing but prompt. <laughs> <laughs> Our next order of business is to nominate a chance to be chairman there. <laughs> Our next order of business is to nominate a vice chair for the board. Open the floor for nominations. Nominate Aaron. I'll second that. That's what happens when you walk in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any other nominations? Any further nominations? Hearing none, all in favor? All opposed? One abstention? Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we will now move on to approval of the minutes from uh, both the December 6th, 2017 meeting and the December 26th, 2017 meeting. Uh, we'll, we'll take the December 6th minutes first. Are there any questions about the December 6th minutes? I would entertain a motion to approve the December 6th, 2017 Zoning Board of Appeals minutes. Chair, could we just make a, um, a point of order is that some of the people here uh, were not member, um, but we considered that as an issue at the last hearing and that uh, provided the meeting minutes were given to the new members, uh, what's the position of the board? For everyone to vote or just those four people that attended should vote? Well, there's only three of us here. Mm -hmm. Two, three, three, three. Yeah. For, December, for the December 6th. Yeah, for both of those, there's only three mm -hmm. members. Well, I think we can all, there's a difference between people who weren't members and people who weren't here. I think that clearly people who were members but weren't here, it's certainly been established that we can vote. Um, I, I, the other two, would, I, I would agree, is a little tricky. <laughs> but I think we have plenty of votes without the new members. Very good. So we will ask our, our new members to abstain from uh, voting on these particular minutes. Uh, Mr. Caton moved to approve the minutes, I believe, or did, was that just as a point of order? Just okay. Clarification. Okay. And so, I would entertain a motion to approve. I'll move to approve the the minutes of the December. Do we want to do these separately? Yes. I'll move to uh, approve the minutes of the December sixth, twenty seventeen, Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Do we have a second? I'll oh, second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes. All right, all opposed? It's a 4 0 vote. We've been moving on to our December 26, 2017 meeting minutes. Are there any question, questions about the minutes? Hearing none, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the December 26th meeting minutes. So moved. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second. Very good. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes. Again, we have a 4 0 vote. Thank you. Uh, 5 0. Is it five? Yeah. Okay. 
Great. Next item on the agenda, old business. There is none, so we'll move straight into new business. Uh, and we will uh, hear uh, first the request of Daniel Sabin, who's the owner of the property at 2 Loxley Road, map U6, lot 18A, to expand their non-conforming single-family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, does our code enforcement officer, uh, Ben McDougall, could you offer any comments on the application before we begin? Sure. Uh, Mr. Sabin is doing some interior remodeling of the house and I was there for an inspection and we began discussing how he could expand the house and his desire to expand the house over the garage and I informed him, informed him that he would need a survey to determine how he sat on the property and from there we'd be able to determine what route he would take and the survey uh, demonstrated that he was pretty close to the side property line, closer than the 10 foot setback we currently have. Uh, therefore, in order to do this, he needs a zoning board approval. Does the board have any uh, initial questions for our code, code enforcement officer? I, I, I have one. Was this property previously the subject of a variance? You know? Not that I'm aware of. Any further initial questions? Sorry, um, Tim, you're asking whether there would be an, a variant, copy of the variance on file in the code enforcement's office or yes. office. Okay. And there's no copy of the variance there? No, there isn't. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Very good. Thank you. We'll move on to the applicant, Mr. Sabin. Uh, I don't know what the procedure is. Hi. So my name is Daniel Sabin. Uh, what the mic house in close the mic. Is it better now? <laughs> so we bought the house in 2016, and uh, we started looking to what we need to do about it. It was neglected for quite a while, and you could see it internally, the electricity, the plumbing, especially in the kitchen area and the bathroom. So we started removing the, the sheetrock and the drywall, and then we did the electricity, the plumbing, and the heating in part of the house. And um, <clears throat> there is a problem over the garage in the sense that the water is leaking and leaking into the room that's under one of the slabs of the garage, under half of the garage. And uh, it started producing rot in two beams, so we had to fix that. So looking over that, we realized that the flat, or almost flat roof on the right side of the garage in winter accumulates lots of debris and snow, and then water again starts seeping, leaking inside the garage. So instead of trying to fix it, we decided initially to tear it down and rebuild it. And while doing that, we realized that the best for us, from our point of view, would be to have a single roof, high-pitched, so no accumulation will be possible during winter, easier to maintain, and probably less problem, hopefully less problems in the future. And that's when we, we discussed with, with Ben, and we said, okay, what's the process? Do we apply for a permit? And we found out that uh, we need to file this application in front of the Zone Board Committee and apply for granting the application. Um, we discussed at the beginning with uh, our closest neighbors, obviously the closer to the edge of the property where we want to extend over the garage, and uh, we asked them if they have any problem with that. They said no, on the contrary, they would prefer to have a nicer looking house in front of their property than the one existing. And uh, at that point, we sent an email to the mail server of the community trying to ask the opinion of other people in the neighborhood. We didn't receive answers from all of them, but the few that responded support the project, and they said, well, it was time somebody take care of the house. Uh, the expansion is not large. Uh, it's probably less, I mean, definitely less than 200 square feet added surface to the house, living surface. 
But again, the main point is trying to have a single roof over the garage and, and get rid of all the possibility of leaking water from, uh, from snow, specifically. Um, we plan to retire here, so that's why we invest in the house. Uh, we try to do the best as we can now, so in the future we have no problems, we hope. Now, we tried to explain the best as we could the, the reasons behind our application and uh, in the hope that you would consider it. And if you have questions for me, please ask. Thank you, Mr. Sabin. Are there uh, questions at this time uh, for the applicant? Yes, Mr. Sabin, did, did you have a survey done of the property when you purchased it, or is this a more recent? No, we did the survey. We did the survey when uh, Ben asked us to do one, okay. just to realize how close we are to the line, or what is the state of the line, actually, because we didn't know exactly where the property lays. Um, so, Mr. Saban, on the, on the current flat part of the roof, is that totally flat from the front to the back, or is there a pitch on the no, back side of that? There is a very low pitch from the front to the back, okay. going from the front to the back. And if you look at the photos, you'll see that, I mean, there is a single photo, you'll see the half of the roof in front is a bit raised, but goes down towards the back on the right-hand side of the garage. So your proposal is then to match the pitch? On the right side yes, and the left we, side? On the next page, we have a, a sketch actually made by an architect for the plan, what we would envision we would want to do. So to follow the pitch of the existing roof, but just to extend it to the side of the house. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there presently a window on uh, the garage facing your neighbor's property? Yes, we are planning to have a window there. But is there the neighbor house is perpendicular to ours, and between our house and their house is their garage, which is perpendicular to the road. So the window will face their roof line, pretty much. So there's a window there now, and there will be one in the new. Yes. Okay. I, I note there will be a few trees removed as part of, part of the project. So between the two properties as they stand today, there are two large pines, and we're worried that they will fall at some point. So we talked to our neighbor. We decided that we might want to remove them together because they are on his property now after we did the survey. And uh, the problem is that they are very large and they are on the back of this section between the houses and they are very hard to reach. So we were thinking if we demolish the garage, it will make it much easier to cut them down. And you haven't heard any concerns raised about erosion or visibility or anything like that? With the, no, no, on the contrary. I mean, what we heard was that people were happy that it's going to look better than it does today. Thank you. You're welcome. How close is your neighbor's garage to your property line? Do uh, I don't know exactly. I would say 12 to 15 feet. So they'd be about 15 feet or 20 feet? Uh, we will stay on the current foundation. So currently, the closest point, if you, if you look at the survey on the next page, the closest point is the corner of the foundation of the existing garage, which we will maintain. And it's about uh, four feet. So from that line, I believe they are 12, 15 feet further. So it would be, let's say, 16. 16 to 20 feet somewhere there. Okay. Thank you. Ben, have we received any feedback from the next door neighbor, Dodd or Haas? I, I haven't received any formal okay. feedback on this. I've had a few phone inquiries, just asking some general questions about it, but okay. no formal feedback. Any further questions for uh, Mr. Sabin at this time? <clears throat> Got a question. Um, so. Uh, 
yeah, I see on the plan the sort of the closest corner to the property line on the north side is about 4.2 feet, and that's that's where the nonconformance exists. Uh, that sort of whole edge of the garage is closer than 10 feet from the property line. Will any of anything you're proposing uh, result in the house being closer to the property line than it is no, today? No. Okay. So the house will build exactly on the same foundation, so the footprint will be exactly the same. The only difference is that the roof will be extended over both bases. Thank you. You're welcome. Actually, Mr. Sabin, um, the, we only have the front view of the, the front elevation. On the rear, is there a dormer on that, or is that just a slope down from the peak? Uh, on the rear, this house is straight, a straight wall, except for the missing part where there is half roof. There, the roof just it just slopes down to the level of the first level. Okay, so if I'm looking at Exhibit B, the the photo, there's the two garage stalls. The one closer to the house has, uh, I'll call it a more full roof. The back of that is not a simple, uh, there's, a, there's a dormer on that, or is no. that straight up? No. No, the back of that, so um, the left side ends with a straight wall and the roof follows the, the gambrel roof on the back. Okay. So from the back, you see a straight wall for two, three quarters of the house, right? All the way up to the second floor. Okay. And the right bay does not have anything at the first floor level. Yeah. What is the topography like in the area between your house and your neighbor's house? Does it slope toward the there back? A, Does it slope? There is an abrupt slope between the houses. Okay. And to the left of the house, as you look at the photo, the slope again is abruptly towards a ditch. So this is the only place where I assume they could build a house initially, because from all around the house in the back and to the sides, the land slopes down. I guess I just want to make sure uh, if you, you know, run off from the new roof, is that going to go toward the back of your property? Is it going toward your neighbor's property in any way? We will have gutters, I assume, and it will go wherever they go today, because there are gutters on the house. So they will go in the same place, if I understand correctly. So uh, if the question is there will be more erosion because of the additional water, I don't think so, and there is ledge on that side. Okay. Any further questions from Mr. Sabi? Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll uh, open the Sabin application up for any questions or comments from the floor. Just please step to the podium. Uh, Roger Rio, I live at Bridal Pathway. On, on the map, it's shown as Friar Lane, which is that's a that's misnamed. That is that is Bridal Pathway. And uh, I support everything that they've planned, so I'm not disagreeing with anything. Maybe add some information. I believe that one car garage on the right was added about 30 years ago. I don't know whether that, it seems like it should have had a variance, but apparently it doesn't. And also to the right side is a really kind of a V-shaped gully that runs back away from the road. So I, I don't see anybody objecting. This is really a significant improvement that they, they're thinking about. So. I think most of the neighbors would support this. Thank you. Mr. Rio, yes. uh, you've lived, lived in that neighborhood for how many years? It'll be 44 years this year. Thank you. So I've seen a lot of the history that came in. So, but this, this would be a, a, a good addition and a good improvement, including the driveway. They took down trees. They had actually done this driveway and left a huge tree between the entryways into the, two, into the bays. So 
good, good work so far, so I'm assuming that it'll be consistent with what their, what their plans are. And this house is what the previous owner, I think, may have been the original owner who died about three years ago. And they had made some improvements to it, but nothing that this significant, certainly, other than the one car garage. Okay, okay thank you. Any further questions or comments from the floor? Uh, ben, I, I think you explained earlier that uh, you had not received any any further comments or emails or letters or anything like that, just some inquiries? That's correct. Uh, this time I'll close uh, the floor to uh, comment and uh, board is free to open up discussions on this. Yes, I'm, I'm actually concerned about that, about this roof line. I'm only seeing, I am only seeing the, the front elevation and I'm curious about the, the, the side elevation, if that's um, simply a regular gabled roof or is it got some sort of shed dormer or something on the back that makes that vertical line in that back right corner go straight up versus be just a increasing the pitch of this garage. Do you have any information on that, Ben? My understanding is that it's a matching dormer on the rear of the house. Does, it, does the rear of the house match the front of the house? Okay. 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 seems to me, I guess, that the, the application was complete and well prepared, and we do appreciate that. Um, aside from your one point, Aaron, which is, which is well taken, although I think we have gotten an explanation okay. on that now. Um, but when, when we consider all the other factors uh, we have to consider in these particular application, uh, applications under Section 19.4.3.B.4, um, it, it seems to me as though the standards are met. That's my my thinking on the subject. Any, any thoughts to the contrary? I would like to support your point that the application is very nicely prepared. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I would concur with that point too, this being the first meeting I've attended and the first package I've seen. It's easily laid out. I know what the property is, what exactly you're trying to do, and how you're trying to do it. So thank you. Appreciate it. So uh, uh, the chair would seek a motion at this time to approve the request of Daniel Saban, owner of the property at 2 Loxley Road, map U6, lot 18A, to expand their non-conforming single-family dwelling based on section 19.4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion? This is approved unanimously. Right. <clears throat> uh, on to our findings of fact. Uh, findings of fact one. Daniel Sabin and Mahala Sabin are the owners of 2 Loxley Road, map U6, lot 18A. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. Additional findings of fact, additional finding one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Additional finding of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the non-conformity of the existing structure. Additional finding of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. I 
would seek a motion to approve the findings of the findings of fact and the additional findings of fact. Chair, may I interrupt uh, before you get to that? Sure. Uh, as to number two, do you think there should be a notation that the garage on the right-hand side is pre-existing for know, 30 years or so? So that would be a grandfather, so that there's two parts to the nonconformity, if there is any. So the original mm -hmm. structure and then the addition of the garage. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, I don't think. So my concern is that I don't want this to come back. I just want to make sure that the footprint includes the garage on the right, <coughs> even though it was created after the original uh, structure. And that the footprint will rem remain the same as the garage portion of the house on the right, on the right side of the photo. So that, that was my query on number two. So we would say the proposed uh, additional finding two would be the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure, period. You the, could just say including the garage. Yeah. Including the garage. Yes. Okay. Further thoughts on the proposed findings? If there are none, I would seek a motion uh, approving the proposed finding, uh, including the suggested amendment by Mr. Caton. So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion? Hearing none, all in, all in favor of the motion to approve the proposed findings. Again, unanimous. Very good. Again, th thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Sagan. We appreciate it. Uh, our next order of business is to hear the request of James and Christy Capistrand, owners of the property at 68 Long Point Lane, map R3, lot 9A, to expand their non conforming single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Mr. McDougall, if you have uh, comments on the application. Sure. The Capistrand submitted a building permit to turn an existing deck into some sort of sunroom or den single story living space where there is currently an existing deck. Uh, when I got more information about the property lines, I found that the proposed expansion does not meet the setback requirements, even though there is an existing, there's an existing open deck on the corner of the house in this location. Uh, but that can't be turned into, expanded into living space without a similar approval to the last one based on the same section of the ordinance. So I advise them to seek a zoning board approval to do this. And, and what is this yeah. the required setback there? Yeah, I, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to, sorry, could you restate what you just said and identify the code section that says that a deck cannot be converted into a, a living space? Well, it, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an expansion of the structure. So it would fall under the, the same provision that we're the, at. Page, this is uh, the same provision, in, in, enlargement. Is it, is it called enlargement or expansion? On page uh, 47 of the new book. Yes. Ben, I'm sorry. I missed part of what you said. Um, the gist of this is that the deck is being turned into living space? Yes, there, there's an existing... The footage of the deck is being built over and turned into living space. Is that correct? I'm asking. I missed that last sentence. I'm sorry. Is the gist of it that the square footage of the deck is being turned into living space? That's correct. So the rest of the house is remaining 
configured the, as it currently is. The rest of the house is, is remaining as is. The, the building permit application they brought into me was to take the existing square footage of the existing open deck. Yep. No roof. Yep. Uh, just an open deck. Take that existing square footage, build four season, one story living space on top of the existing footprint of the deck. Okay. And that whole space is in non compliance, correct? Yes, it is. The, the side setback is 25 feet and the rear setback is 20 feet. And they're planning on changing the foundation type? Uh, 18 and 16, right? I don't, let's see. Well, they, uh, on the application, they said the present foundation was in good condition. So you're, you're planning on using? It's actually a ledge block that the deck was built on. There's no footing there. So it's, it is, you can't even dig a hole. It's a whole ledge. So what I did is I cut out a flat spot for the post to sit on the corner of the deck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is change that post out to an 8 by 8 post for that small space. Is, okay. it, is it appropriate for us to hear from the applicant now then, unless there are further questions for Ben? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, Mr. Capistran, we invite you forward to the podium. That is that would then be a private approval from the association, yeah. which would not be town related, but of course. No, just to let you know that nobody in the association has Very good. Okay. Mr. Chair, I actually have another question for Ben. Sorry to backtrack here. Uh, I see this. This lot has frontage on Long Point Lane, but, and maybe this is a question for the applicant as well. It, it, where do you get your access? Is it from this gravel drive that's in the back? Well, that's just like a, a car road. Okay. Uses. Okay, understood. I seen that use it. So, so just for clarification, so okay, the, the front of the lot. You can drive up it if you want, but. Right, so, but the front of the lot, and, and the reason I'm asking is because you know, a front setback would have, would be different than a rear setback, which is different than a side setback. But in this case, the front of the lot is on Long Point Lane. And Ben, is that that is that how you see it as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the rear is on that gravel drive. Okay. Thank you. That's it for now. And Mr. Capistran, you you commented briefly from your seat on what you were going to do for the, the foundation yeah. for that structure. And just now that we've got you on the record in front of the mic, could you explain that again for us? Yeah, the, uh, the deck is built on um, ledge rock. So the whole house and foundation was built on ledge rock. And so what I have is a flat spot for the post to sit on for the existing deck now. And it's, it's, it goes up through the whole house, through the whole center of the house. So Obviously, we can't do a footing there and dig without blasting or something to that effect. So what I did is I flattened out a spot with a disc grinder and cut, you know, notches and flattened it out to put a post there for the deck. So now I'm going to just replace that um, post with a, a full, uh, eight by eight post and just rejoice the uh, deck to a two by ten. Add on to the deck. And do, you, and do you have any concerns that that might cause any, any erosion issues or? No, it, there's a pretty good pitch there um, and there's not much grass. It's mostly all just the sp exposed ledge. Can you, um, we've kind of heard this in bits and pieces now, but can you 
the applicant state what it is that you're doing, since it's not really clear from the application. What, what is it you're doing here? It's an existing deck. We're turning them to a uh, three-season room. And you're, and you're doing that with, how are you, what materials are you using? Yeah, I thought I had a print there of two by tens, two by fours, sheeting and roofing, asphalt shingles, and everything stated. And uh, one of those pages there. Okay, so it's not, it's not going to have a door, it's just a... Yes, there's, there's going to be a, a gliding door and one window. Okay. It, it, it shows, in one of the prints there, it should show a, uh, a cutout for the door and uh, okay. one window. Okay, and this is going to be used for what? Either a sunroom or, um, I'm not sure what we're going to use it for yet. We need storage, it's more than anything. Okay, and uh, picking up on a question somebody asked with reference to the earlier request, where did the deck come from? When was the deck built? There was an existing deck there bigger than that with a handicap ramp from the existing owner. So I demoed the whole thing and rebuilt a new deck there back when we rebuilt the whole house. I see. And I actually made the deck smaller. The footings still are sitting out there further out, 10 feet out from that deck. So the deck that's here now is actually a lot smaller than the existing deck that was there. Is this going to be just a sunroom, or will it be a heated space? Um, I don't think we need to put heat in there. No, I'm not going to put heat in it. It's going to have a door on it. Yeah, we don't need it. So you can close it off if you want. We're not putting... The rest of the house is a full season house, right? Yes. So this room, you're not... Well, we have a revived heater that heats the whole house. We don't have base board or okay. oil, so if I want, I could leave it open. It would probably be heated. Okay. But it's not that big. It's only 80 square feet, so I'm not going to run the heat in it. Can you let us know when you purchased the house? What year was that? I think it's 2011. We purchased it, and then we um, there was a cottage on it. Demo the whole cottage. So I think in 2012 is when we finished the existing house that's on it. And at that time, the old deck was removed as part of the demolition. Yeah, yes. it, it wasn't. It was bigger, so it didn't really have curb appeal. Because and, it, and it also had a handicap ramp built into it that went all the way down to the access road in the back. Sure. Um, do you have a copy of the building permit that you sought when you did the reconstruction? Must be on file. Probably yeah. it has to be on file. We went through groups and they did it. Uh, okay. I'm not sure how much we have with us here, but um, um, when you read, um, when you sought the building permit to redo the, the cottage, was there what was the space? You call it the deck here, unless Ben has a copy of it. What was, what was? There was another 10 feet out by eight feet on that deck. And there was a handicap ramp that went aside of it. Sorry, let me back up. We're missing some pieces of the puzzle here. I was hoping that you could um, have paper with us, but we'll have to talk to code enforcement officer in a moment. And is that the intent that you had at the time for doing the, the reconstruction of the cottage in 2011, 2012, on those papers, did it indicate that there was a deck there or that there would be no deck at that time? No, it was that there was going to be a deck because we do have a deck there. Okay. Um, that is my question. Thank you. Okay. I've got a couple questions, <clears throat> and this, this relates to sort of the standards we have to look at when we're considering the application. I think I know the answer <laughs> based on uh, what I could see on uh, Google Earth, which was absolutely nothing because it's completely co tree covered. Um, 
are there any views in this area of that, that neighbors might have that this project uh, could have an impact on? No, because we all have, these are non <laughs> right, but or views of of something else, of privacy or or anything like that would. No, because would... this is this is on the existing house where the roof is already a deck, so it's not going to go beyond what we have right now. Your, your neighbor at sixty four, which is sort of the closest structure, do they have any? sort of prominent windows facing your, your current deck now or anything like that? Our current or, deck. Our yeah. house is a little kitty corner, so yeah. it goes it's past our house. Gotcha. Uh, and then my other, I've got another question. Do you know how close the existing deck is to the side property line and to the rear property line? Yeah, I think it's 16 feet. Eighteen and sixteen. That so, yeah, side is eighteen and rear is sixteen feet. And it is is the you said the side is eighteen. Yeah. Is it is is that the steps or is that? Excuse me. Is that so? I, it it looks like from the the what's called the sketch plan from Titcom Associates. Yeah, that's, that's uh, the, from the deck itself. So the steps are even closer. The steps. So it looks like there's a set of stairs that oh, yes. that's yes, even closer. Yeah, I don't think, I'm not sure if those stairs are going to work on that side yet, so I'm not sure. where. I'm thinking of putting the door on the far back corner, so the stairs might go down and out and then down at an angle to the back of the house. Okay. Um, I didn't draw any steps, so I, I kind of left that out in the open. Sure. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that yet. But now, <clears throat> question for Ben, I guess. Do setbacks apply to steps? Yes. Right. So yeah, we, we need to talk about steps. If so I think that's an important piece because what, you know, one of our standards or one of the standards for approving this would be that you're not increasing the nonconformity. So, so today you're 18 feet and 16 feet. Yeah. If you so, if you move those steps closer to the rear property line, then it may be closer than 16 feet. Right. So I, you know, that's that's sort of a detail that so I think if, we need to learn a little do, more about. If, if we do use, if I do put the door back right where the deck is now and the steps are now then the steps are still there, three steps down, which is out 30 inches. Sure. I, I think that's an, you know, it's, it's, it seems like a minor detail, and I appreciate right. it, uh, having flexibility while you're building it to sort of do what works best, but um, again, if if I don't think you're able to to move those, uh, or at least I don't think you're able to to get any closer or, or as close as 16 feet from the rear property line with a new set of stairs. Um, now on the, on the side property line, it, it looks like the corner of the house is as close as 1.3 feet to the property line. So um, I think you probably have a little more flexibility on the side, you know, if, right. because it, unless you were going to get closer than 1.3 feet to the side property line, in my mind, you wouldn't be in, increasing the nonconformity. But if, you, if it goes in the back, I think you're on the risk of doing that. So just ben, just an observation or comment I there. Can ask Ben for some help here while we're... Um, I'm having trouble finding... The issue is the deck 
And that doesn't count for purposes of nonconformity, essentially. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Okay. Um, well, then maybe the question is, explain to me again, I'm sorry, why, since the deck already covers this square footage, why it's, it, it doesn't, uh, why, why closing it in doesn't fail to increase the nonconformity? Because the deck is nonconforming. Yeah. And, and it's, so, it, so it's grandfathered to be the distance it is yeah. from the property lines. Yeah. So those, those distances are being maintained. Yeah. They're not getting closer to the property right. lines. So they're not, so the nonconformity is not being increased. We have a nonconforming structure that's being enlarged, but we're not increasing the nonconformity because it's a vertical enlargement. The nonconformity is a horizontal issue, whereas the enlargement is happening vertically, therefore not increase, getting close to the property line, which would increase the nonconformity. I, I'm sorry, I keep slipping away the last few words there. <laughs> um, we, the, we, the, 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 yeah, we, show we me the statute. We have a definition of increase of nonconformity. Correct, where is that? Um, it is, Page fifth, uh, 17 of the zoning new ordinance incre uh, increase. And it does specifically explain that. So that would be the increase in height of a structure. Right. It talks about causes no further increase to the linear extent of the nonconformance. That's where it kind of talks about that. And, and this is a this is a linear or horizontal nonconformance, uh, not a height nonconformance. So it's the height nonconformance that's being increased. No, the height is the height of the structure is conforming. Right. The the side and rear setback. Did I, the height is not non-conforming. Did I say that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, the height is conforming. Uh, the side and rear setback are, are non-conforming. Correct. For but they're being increased. Correct. And they're not increasing the non-conformity because they're not getting closer to the side or rear property lines? Correct. Is that your concern? That, that no, we, I, that I still don't quite understand what the nonconformity increase is that the problem is. I guess I don't understand the basic problem. Why doesn't the deck count? Why, why, why couldn't they just do this with a building permit? Because yeah. they already have the square footage there? Is that yes, your question? Or why, I understand why they couldn't do it with a building permit, I guess. But I guess I don't fully understand why this isn't sort of a, I, I, I'm not saying I don't understand it. I just, I just need to understand where the definition is so I can look at it. Um, since there isn't an increase in the non-conforming area and there's no, there's no, in, there's no increase in the non-conformity vis-a-vis the boundary lines, um, why is it a problem that it's going the only change is a vertical change. Because the definition of increase in nonconformity of a structure states that uh, an increase in, that includes the increase in the height, in the height of a structure. Which is what the proposal is here, of course, is to, to increase the height. And then page 47 of the zoning ordinance explains that a non-conforming structure can essentially be rebuilt in kind with a simple building permit. But if someone wants to expand upon that, it requires this process. Again, Mike, I'm sorry, where were you reading? Uh, page, 
page 17 right. is the definition of right. increase in nonconformity of a structure. And then page 47 is the actual yeah, tr trigger for them to be here. I guess I'm still not, I'm still not, I'm still not clicking. I don't understand where the lateral increase in nonconformity is. There isn't one. Right. Which is what the increase in nonconformity definition is about. Mm, no. Okay. It, it is, it is to, to a certain extent, but it also specifically includes increase in height of the structure. I'm sorry, where is that? Uh, on 17 and line four of incre the increased definition. But we, we're, we're not, we're not increasing the nonconformity by approving this because the the height restriction is 35 feet. So if this was a 35 foot tall house right. and they right. were asking to be 38, then we'd be increasing the nonconformity of a structure because we'd be analyzing the height. So the height of the structure does not come into play on this application because it's only, I don't know, maybe 15 feet high. So we're not, we're not talking about height here as conforming or non-conforming. Well, it, it's, it's conforming, the height. What's non-conforming are the side and rear setbacks. Okay. And we're but not we, we routinely grant variances for structures that are perhaps extending parallel to the property line, we increasing. We routinely grant variances. I'm sorry? We do not routinely grant variances. This is not a variance. Well, Um, well, we, we, we routinely have approved those things under this subsection of the ordinance uh, where there is the size of the building is, is being doubled um, if it doesn't come any nearer the property line. So it doesn't increase the variance, correct? That, that's correct. The same, the same provision of the ordinance can be used to extend a house. If, if a house was, say, 1.3 feet from the right. property line and they wanted to lengthen their house, they'd be allowed to do that under this provision as long as they don't become more nonconforming by getting closer to the property line. Right. They're under this provision the zoning board is allowed to sort of grandfather their setback right, right. at 1.3 feet, as long as it's as long as they meet all the criteria in that section. Right. Um, please bear with us. We're just working <laughs> on some of the issues here. Ben, can you explain whether the applicant, the original owner of the house, could have purchased the lot, built the house, not the deck? and whether the building permit at that time would have included the deck or not? The, the, build, the building permit would have included the deck. Okay. Now, is that because they could not build the corner of the house as close to, essentially, they could not use that space where the deck is at the time they applied for the building permit to actually finish off the house at that location? Well, I. I may allow them to speak to this, but my understanding is they essentially built, rebuilt the house in kind, except they pared back the deck. Correct. Was it? Yeah, the existing was, deck was downsized. Was and there, was the, there the deck? The that we had made for the new house that we did build there, that, that is on that front for the existing house. But it's also so, downsized from the deck, the existing deck and the handicap ramp that was in. So they probably had a choice in 2011 to rebuild the cottage essentially in kind, keeping the same amount of floor area, not increasing deck space, uh, or they- I didn't even ask to do it back then. 
Yeah, yeah so I mean, it sounds like they just, that, that's what that they chose could, to do. If they had come into Bruce and asked to, you know, expand upon that, you know, Bruce would have sent them down this path as well at that point. But it sounds like it was essentially an in-kind replacement of the structure. Okay, and so before the in-kind replacement, so when the original house was put on, when the, the original deck was put on the house, is that because they could not build the house to, that, to the perimeter where the deck is, as either now, currently, or um, in the older deck? I'm trying to understand whether there's something peculiar about why there's a deck. Can I, can I sort of cut to the point here? <clears throat> ben, is there any reason to believe that the existing structure uh, was not built or, or was not built as approved under some building permit? in the past? I, I don't have any reason to believe that. Right. And, I, and I don't know the history of the house in, in depth enough to answer your question more specifically. Right, so you know, I, I think we're sort of getting caught in the weeds here. What's, what's presented to us as existing, I think we're to assume was approved uh, by the code enforcement officer at the time, and was was allowed to be built. Uh, well, it legally. could be the side of the of the room, as it were. Uh, I'm in John's camp. I'm, there's a comment that was made earlier as to why he, this the square footage of a deck cannot be converted into living space, and I'm trying to reconcile that particular point. So, you know, on the one hand, the, the deck is lawfully there, so why not go up and put make that livable space? And so John went down a line of questioning. He's trying to resolve that particular question. And I was not even clear as to what the answer is. So maybe I missed a point in the beginning as to why this particular deck cannot be converted to living space. Let me ask, if I may. Yeah. Um, again, in going back to our discussion of a few minutes ago, as I understood what I was being told, um, and I'm Maybe getting hungry, but um, it, it, the, the fourth line in the, in this or increase in height or increase in the height of a structure was that the language you were citing to me, Michael? That, that's what I was citing, but but then Ben clarified that because we're not going up over what the thirty-five. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, but wait a minute. Really it, play. But given we're not going up over it, then the height is not a nonconformity, and we're not increasing that nonconformity. So I don't see what nonconformity is. Correct. So, so the way I see this, if there was no deck there, they would be able to expand the house into that area. Because they're, if, as long as they're, as long as they meet these, uh, as long as we determine that uh, the building expansion is meeting the setbacks to the greatest I mean, yeah. practical I mean, extent, and they're not increasing the nonconformity. They're not getting any closer yeah. to the, I mean, if, to the if, lot lines than if, they are today. If they were building a tower over the deck, and that was going to be out of conformity with the height restrictions, then this language would apply. Yeah, it would not be allowed. Yes. But it doesn't apply here. Correct. Well, it, it doesn't apply because we're not increasing the nonconformity. Yeah, there is no nonconformity in height. There is no non. There is no height nonconformity, and we're not increasing that. So why? What? What is the? We're we're nonconforming. The the setback, the side setback is nonconforming. It's one point three feet yeah. where twenty five feet is yeah. required, and even the deck I think we said is yeah. fifteen sixteen feet from the side property line. So we're not increasing so, that. So <laughs> right. So we have a nonconformity of one point three feet and they're expanding 16 feet away from the line. So they're, so they're obviously not increasing that nonconformity by, by going less than 1.3 feet. And similarly on the back, the nonconformity is there's 16, 18 feet from the rear property line where 20 is required. Uh, so, so they are not, the rear setback is nonconforming and the side setback is nonconforming. And the board has to determine that those nonconformities are not being increased. Right. Meaning we're not getting closer to the property line. And isn't that the case? <laughs> no. Or have I missed the whole conversation? <laughs> no, th this proposal is not to get closer to either of those property lines. Right. Yeah. 
So there's no enlargement. Right. Except if they were to move the stair, if they were to rotate the stairs around to the back, what, what I'm calling the back, yeah, well that, towards that the rear property that. line, oh, yeah. then they are closer to the... Right. Well, there, there is an enlargement. You sure. Know, you, you take a... You, you it's take an expansion a, of a I mean, if you, structure. If, if, your, if your neighbor had an open deck, and next thing you know, they built a 35-foot tall tower, would you call that an enlargement of the house? No, I assume it, I assume it would be... A, Non-conforming height restriction or something. I would have. No, you can. You know, you can build 35 feet high. So, I mean, if someone if if someone had a deck one foot from your property line, you think they could build 35 feet tall on that deck that's one foot away from your property line? Right, it's within the setback. Here's what I think. I, Wait, I think I, I, that doesn't increase, but the height is not as high as the rest of the house. I mean, they aren't exceeding. They aren't exceeding any nonconformity there might be in the rest of the house, or any other. I mean, it's not your example is specious. I mean, it, it, it's not like they're building something that towers over the rest of the house. It's it's in keeping with the rest of the house. John, are you, I I guess I'm confused as to where we're going with this. Are are you essentially saying you support the application, or you you don't think they even need to be here? I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm. I don't. I'm trying to. Uh, I was. I was grappling with the fact that I couldn't understand what language Ben was using to bring them here, and um, I'm still a little. Uh, it's page forty-seven. Yeah. Num number four it says a non-conforming structure located closer than the required setback may be enlarged as long as the area being enlarged meets the setback requirements. It doesn't. The area being enlarged does not meet the setback requirements. If they were expanding on the other side of the house that's in the middle of the lot and that expansion was with it, met the setback requirements, we wouldn't be here. So basically we have to make, just make sure that they're not expanding the nonconformity. And they meet the, and we have to determine that it, it, the, re, the, the expansion meets these setbacks to the greatest practical extent. Correct, and that it doesn't create erosion, yeah. have a, yeah. too much of a views. detrimental impact on views. Yeah. And so I think we've heard. Okay, well, again, then, okay, I understand why we're here. And so then the question is does the rest of the language of that? Paragraph, give us the authorization to approve this. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Do they, does the application meet the standards? And should we actually save some of this for the board discussion? Yes. Because it's not going to expand. Because <laughs> you still have chair, our application on the here. Some, some control here. <laughs> so let, let's put let's put this issue aside for now. Hopefully, hopefully longer than for now. But uh, if we can continue on with any questions that we may have for the applicants, I think that's a, a fine idea, a fine suggestion. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'd like to just sort of close the loop on some of the other, I guess, items where we should be looking at. Is there a, a septic system on the property or is it served by public sewer? It's public sewer. Okay, thank you. And will, will there be any uh, vegetation removed as part of the, no, the project? No, there's no vegetation. Thank you. I had a couple clarifying questions uh, going back to uh, the steps actually. The height of the floor, is that going to be consistent with the current height of the deck? So you'd have the same number of steps up and down? Yes, yeah, so it would be the same. Okay. Yeah, three steps. And then, well actually, it does say in the application there is septic. Excuse me? It says in the application there is a septic. Septic in front side, yeah, not to be disturbed. Yeah, opposite side. Of it. So you, do, you, are, you have a septic here, no, it's not. Public. No, I'm sorry, public. Okay. Right septic down there. Um, and then the type of foundation on the application is concrete. Is the is that is part of the house concrete and, and just the deck legs? Is it all legs? Is is the entire area we're talking about tonight? Is that on legs? Yeah, the whole entire um, foundation footings were built on uh, ledge rock. Okay. Great. Thank thank you.
Additional questions for the applicants? Uh, yes. Just one for Ben. Um, attached to our backup are the structural plans for the, the deck and the addition. Our approval isn't construed as approving any construction methods. No. That's no. There'll be a full. A there'll be a full review for building code compliance okay. and during the building permit process. Any further questions for the applicants? Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you. Thank both. you. We'll <laughs> open the floor up for public comment or questions. Good evening. My name is Angela Berry, and I am the abutter to that property. That was an interesting discussion. I'm not sure I understood or followed it all, but thank you. Um, I, I don't have any um, objections to this um, this addition or um, whatever they propose to build. My only question, I guess, was um, where is there there is going to be an existing door or staying where the existing door is? Yeah, the gliding door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's sort of flush with the house. Then you're going to go flush with that corner, and and the stairs will still and go. The stairs will no, it's fine with me. No concerns over it. Thank okay. you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Uh, ben, did you receive any, any feedback, emails, letters, anything like that? No, I had a couple of phone inquiries, but no, no formal concerns or uh, nothing written. Okay. Seeing that there's no further public comment or questions, we'll close that portion of the hearing and move into uh, board consideration of the application. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. <laughs> I, I just have a clarification question for Ben. When we're considering the type of foundation, we're considering the foundation here to be legs, right? Or is it the post system? Is it, how it... Well, the, the, uh, the posts would okay. be the, the foundation going under this would be eight by eight posts, okay. technically. And to, to Tim's point, I guess you'll be looking at that sort of thing as part and parcel of the building permit. Yes. Well, we had an interesting conversation about uh, the meaning of enlargement. I think we resolved that for now. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that we can then move into the consideration of the of the merits of the application here, and I don't know if there are comments on that. I, <clears throat> my only comment, you know, I, I, I would su support the application in that I, I think it does meet the setbacks to the ex greatest extent practical when we consider the size of the lot, slope of the land, potential for, for soil erosion, uh, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties. Uh, because essentially it's an existing, you know, it, it's existing there today. I think going up uh, minimizes all those impacts. Uh, uh, you know, I guess my only concern is in increasing the nonconformity, and I don't know how to exactly deal with that because uh, I guess we've heard we heard from the applicant that they're not sure where the stairs are going to go. So, I, you know, if there's some check on that during the, the building permit review um, or we, we maybe we condition it on the stairs going off the side of the deck instead of off the rear which would effectively increase the nonconformity. Can I just ask a question? Would it be any different if the stairs just stay where they are? Because they're That's fine. That's well my, my comment would be that you know you're you're married to, to this approval. So I think, you know, Mike's doing you a favor by bringing this up because he's providing some possible flexibility here. If this gets approved as is, you know, your, 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 stairs, your stairs would go where they're shown on this plan. And just. Okay. 
But finished? Yes. Um, I think I take issue with something you said. I don't think this increases the nonconformity. So if they move the stairs to the back, so today from the back lot line there, I think it was, I think 16 feet. <clears throat> if they swing the stairs around to the back, it would be, if those stairs stick out okay. three yeah, feet, I get it. then they're 13 feet. Okay, so you're saying the stairs technically are themselves a teeny little in nonconformity, and they've increased it because they aren't there now. If they, if they move the stairs. The stairs are part of the structure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I agree with I that. guess is what I'm saying. So. If the stair, yes. if the, if you, if it's built as shown on, uh, where the stairs are shown on this Titcom Associates plan, I think, I think you're meeting uh, the standard, which is you're not increasing the nonconformity. So I think you're fine if they stay as they're shown on this plan. It, it, that's how I'm saying it, anyways. Right. Um, just for clarification, so are you saying that this is where? as built right now, there's a set of stairs on that deck. That's where the stairs are. That's how I understand it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the testimony is that the stairs are in fact right there. So it's on the mic. All right, so, so, so I, I guess, so, sorry Mike, but to sort of close my comments. Sure. Uh, it, since we're all sort of, it sounds like we're all in agreement and the applicant is agreeable to putting stairs back where they are today, then, <laughs> then I will support the application. <laughs> I have a couple comments. I mean, uh, I just want to say that um, I consider myself one of the jealous guardians of setbacks um, on this board. I mean, I think they are there for a purpose, um, and, and I think uh, frequently in considering what we're doing, it's important to remember where the neighbors' houses are. I mean, they're not just random square footage. It's to, because you're too close to, you know, you're getting too close or you're impinging or whatever. Um, my point is, in this case, it, it doesn't seem that this is going to have any impact on the, on, you know, there isn't some neighbor's sun porch that's five feet away that, that's all of a sudden going to be negatively impacted if this occurs. So that's number one why I'm not bothered here. Um, from a precedent point of view, I'm also not bothered. I don't think this is, it's not like they're trying to smuggle in some huge ballroom on what was a huge deck. Um, they're not putting in a 35-foot tower. This is a very small room. It's not even going to be heated. It's going to be, it's going to be sort of an enclosed deck. Um, and so from that point of view, I guess then the language, now that I think I finally understand it, that we can't, exp that we are indeed expanding the, the volume of a structure or a part of the structure that doesn't meet the setback. Um, so it's not a, that's the issue, but it does say we can clearly do that. Um, it's within our authority and power if we think it doesn't cause a problem. Um, so I guess that's where I think I wind up pretty comfortably. Um, although I'm, I'm, I'm as always worried about the next deck that comes in the door for a Tower. And with that, I'd like to conclude by once again thanking Ben, as so often I find myself able to rely on him entirely rather than my own due diligence in uh, <laughs> understanding what's behind the application. So thank you for being a resource. Do any board members want to offer any comments in opposition to the application? All right. Hearing none, I would, <coughs> I think it's appropriate to entertain a motion uh, to approve the request of Christy and James Capistran, the owners of 68 Long Point Lane, map R3, lot 9A, to expand a non-conforming single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. 
So moved. Do we have a second? Any further conversation or discussion? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries unanimously. On to our findings of fact. Proposed finding one. Christy Capistran is the owner of 68 Long Point Lane, map R3, lot 9A. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. Additional finding of fact one. The Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Proposed additional finding two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Okay. Any comments on the proposed findings as I just read them? I've got a comment. <coughs> so finding of fact number one is, uh, describes the lot as a non-conforming lot in the RA zone, which I don't think we've even really, it, it, that is the case, right, Ben? It's a non-conforming lot because it, it's yeah. undersized. Or, Smaller than 80,000 okay. square feet. But we're really we're also dealing with a non-conforming structure here, so I think that should be either added to finding effect number one or an additional finding effect. A non-conforming lot and a non-conforming structure in the RA zone. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, uh, I I think I agree with where you're going. I think we it would be nice to do it so we didn't then have to add another clause that says the non-conforming structure is okay with us. Um, well, it's, it's an existing non-conforming structure. Well, uh, right, because it doesn't meet the setbacks. Finding of fact two says the proposed, proposed structure will not increase, will not increase the non-conformity of the existing structure. So it implies right there that it's Unless, a non-conforming okay. structure. So we, we have a non-conforming lot with an existing non-conforming structure. Exactly. Uh, I Just would, to be pedantic here, are we saying it's not really a structure anymore? We're talking about a proposed enlargement. What's that? No, we're saying... We're saying the structure. existing house is non-conforming. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so when I'm looking at number two and three here, and the, the, the first qualifier says uh, the proposed structure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're just saying that the sunroom, converting the deck to the sunroom is the, is the proposed structure. Yeah. Okay. Right. I guess you don't see it as I do. That's fine. Well, we can keep two and three as it is. And to be clear, I think the uh, proposal was to revise uh, proposed finding of fact one, so it would now read, Christy Capistran is the owner of 68 Long Point Lane, map R3, lot 9A. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot with an existing non-conforming structure in the RA zone. I think instead of structure in that first, it should be non-conforming single family dwelling, just make it consistent. The, the structure we're talking about is the enlargement. The structure, greater structure is the single family dwelling. That work. I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any further comments on the proposed findings? How does it read now? All right. Let me see if I can get it. <laughs> Christy Capistrand is the owner of 68, et cetera, et cetera. On to sentence two, the subject lot is a non-conforming lot with an existing non-conforming single-family home in the RA zone. Warm, warm Replace home with dwelling. That. Replace home with dwelling. Oh, yeah. Dwelling. We're replacing home with dwelling. <laughs> okay. All right. Good, good. Nailed Any, it. <laughs> nailed it. Nailed it. Any further comments on the proposed findings? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm still... It's like I want it to be clear that we saw this and consciously made this decision. Um, well, the findings are, of course, based on the application. And that's the matter before the board. 19.43B4. Right. 
Yeah, the, the, the fact that this is a non-conforming lot is kind of... I, I guess what I would ideally like to do, if I can get my point, and then you can decide if you don't want to do it or not, but it's like in Clause 3, although the... Um, proposed, I guess we're calling the room the structure, is that correct? The room is the structure in this language? Mm -hmm. Although the proposed structure... You could call it the proposed enlargement, the proposed addition. Although the proposed structure is being enlarged um, in a non-conforming Although the area of the proposed enlargement is in the non is non-conforming, we still feel it's in compliance to the greatest practical extent. Just an although in front of there that's properly worded so that it picks up the language that says you can't enlarge something in a non-conforming. It's the same thing you were trying to say, yeah, I the, think. In the, the area, I would say the area yeah. of non-conformity. Yeah, when yeah. It's not on the other side of the house. It's, it's yeah, the, 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 you, can't, you can't enlarge a structure in the non-conforming part of the house. But you can if, if, if you want to and you think it's okay. I mean, that's what the statute says, the ordinance. And so if somehow we could get that into three in a way that's not totally clumsy, that would be nice. I'm not doing a great job myself, but anybody agree with that or nobody cares? <laughs> so you're saying uh, the, the area, the proposed? Although the area of the addition Although the area of the addition is non-conforming, we agree although the that... Area, although, the, although the proposed structure does not meet setback requirements and is being enlarged, we feel it is in, the compli it is in compliance to the greatest practical extent. I mean, that's, the, that's, that's what we're saying. We don't care. We understand that rule, and we... I think I want to be real clear that we understand what that rule is. So the next person that comes in is, you did this, yeah, we did that, but that was, you know, it's very clear. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. So, although the proposed structure um, is non-conforming and is being enlarged, maybe that does it. It is in compliance. In the non is in the non is in non conforming. Or maybe maybe you don't maybe it's does not meet setback requirements. Maybe that's better. Whatever. So so your real concern, just so I'm clear, is that the setbacks aren't being increased. Yeah, my concern is my concern is that it says you can't enlarge it. You can you can do a lot of things, but you can't enlarge it if the part you're enlarging doesn't meet setbacks, which is exactly what we're doing here. It doesn't meet setbacks, but we're enlarging the deck, but it still doesn't meet setbacks. It doesn't make them worse, but that part you can't enlarge. Except that you can if you think it's okay. I mean, that's what the last three lines yeah. of the ordinance of this paragraph say. So that, I just want to make it clear that's where we came out so that it's, the precedent is clear when the next one comes in. That's really why I'm, am I making sense to you at least, somebody? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, I think we could, if we wanted to add something, just saying that the proposed structure is not, uh, impeding on the setbacks any further than the existing structure is, or the enlargement is strictly vertical. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure it's necessary from a, from a language standpoint, um, but there's probably something those smarter than me could figure out.
I mean, <clears throat> I, I will point out we, we see these probably more frequently than any other issue at this board. In fact, the first application tonight was the same exact yeah, right. yeah. issue. I think that this one was, this one confused things a little bit because it was just yeah. an open deck. Yeah. And that made it more confusing that it right. wasn't already going up over enclosed but, space. But, but the, the section of the ordinance where uh, judging this application against is exactly the same. The findings of fact were written nearly exactly the same. So, I, you know, as far as precedent goes, I think there is, we, we see these all the time. And yep. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to adding something, yep. some language that, that you're suggesting, John, but if it, if it belongs in this one, wouldn't, maybe it should have belong, also belonged in the, the first application we saw tonight. But, yeah, I don't see us adding language like this for all these that come through. I, I don't think there's really any need, given the fact that it's, it's, it's clear from the, the site to the ordinance what we're charged with considering and determining. May I make an attempt on number three finding? Sure. Is that still under consideration for modification? Yes? Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. We're, we're still in conversation. Sure. So taking John's point that he raised, the proposed structure does not expand the nonconformities with regard to the side and rear setbacks so that it is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. Works for me. Sounds I, I would, to me. I would support that. <laughs> sure. All right, John. Then, well, I, again, I think that. Is here. Whatever. We want to go home. And that, to me, misses the point. The point is that if that were the issue, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The problem is that you can't expand it. The proposed, you can't expand it. We know that it doesn't expand the setbacks. That's fine. <laughs> then we stick, we stick with finding number three unless we have a modification. Um, if that, that doesn't, we're somewhat circling the, the issue here. And, and, I, and if no one has a better wording for number three, then it, that, that doesn't, um, that's adequate language for me. Just to be clear, the existing language or your proposed new language. The existing number three Great. is okay. adequate for me. Okay. I was trying to suggest other language that would <laughs> pacify a majority of the <laughs> <laughs> All right. I would seek a motion to approve the proposed findings of fact with the um, one change that we made to proposed finding of fact one. So move. Do we have a second? A second. Do we have any further conversation? All in favor? That's unanimous. Very good. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Capistran, for bearing with us through <laughs> this. And, and good luck with your three season room. <laughs> uh, I think that concludes our business this evening. Uh, let's adjourn. Have a good evening. Thanks.